Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey Nockreiner, your host, MC, and all-around security geek, and this is the episode for the week starting October 1st, 2012. So this week's security news includes some cryptographic algorithm updates, some big network breaches, and some upcoming Microsoft updates. I'll jump right in with some major headlines that showed up earlier this week. Headlines that I think were a little fuddy, and by that I mean uh, spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Earlier in the week, there's a bunch of headlines talking about how hackers breached the US nuclear uh, facilities or nuclear networks. What really happened is a White House insider someone that worked in the White House leaked to a journalist that someone in the White House was infected with malware. Basically, they got some sort of email-based malware that included a malicious link or malicious attachment, and they infected a, a computer within the White House. Now, this, of course, is actually a serious security breach. While it really could be just run-of-the-mill malware, to think that a White House computer can be infected could be dangerous. There are obviously many computer systems within the White House that have access to networks such as uh, the networks the U.S. president uses for nuclear communications. However, according to this insider, the breach was on an unclassified network. It was immediately discovered. They have no evidence of information leaking out of the White House. So this, to me, looks like just some run-of-the-mill uh, malware infecting a White House employee. Nonetheless, hopefully, uh, the White House security team is going to up their game as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Another big story comes from one of WatchGuard's technology partners, Kaspersky. On their Secure List blog, one of the Kaspersky researchers released information about attacks that infected 4.5 million Brazilian DSL routers. Essentially, these researchers found that attackers over the past year have been leveraging a flaw in the web interface of six different vendors' DSL routers. Uh, these are the type of routers your ISP gives you when you sign up for internet service. The Kaspersky researchers found the attackers were leveraging something called a cross-site request forgery attack. This is a type of web application attack where if an attacker can get you to click a specially crafted link, they may be able to uh, uh, steal your credentials and gain access to, in this case, your DSL router interface. The attackers used this attack basically to do just that, gain access to the administrative interface of the DSL routers. Once they did that, they were able to redirect the DSL router's DNS lookups to their own malicious uh, DNS poison servers. That way, every time uh, someone behind one of these routers went to Google or any other popular site, these malicious DNS servers could redirect that victim to some other uh, malicious pop-up ad to do click jacking or really any malicious site of the attacker's choosing. So this is a pretty significant attack to, to think that these attackers gain access to so many DSL routers and we're redirecting so many DNS requests. It's very much akin to uh, the DNS changer malware that affected a lot of people. Nonetheless, now that this research is out, hopefully a lot of people will update their routers if you do live in Brazil and you use DSL uh, connectivity, you might want to check out this research and make sure your router isn't one of the affected brands. In other big news this week, NIST, or uh, the U.S.'s National Institute of Standards and Technology, announced a winner to their latest cryptographic algorithm writing competition. They announced that SHA-3 has won their competition as the, the next generation of hashing algorithm. So the algorithm that won is really called uh, Kachak, uh, but it's going to go under the SHA-3 name. So what does this really mean to you? Well, probably not much. At least 
least in the short term. Even Bruce Schneier said that SHA-3 really isn't needed yet. SHA-2, the, the current algorithm a lot of people are using for hashing, is still perfectly fine. Uh, while maybe some mathematicians have found weaknesses in some of the SHA-2 family of algorithms, uh, algorithms like SHA-512, which belongs to the SHA-2 family, is still plenty strong enough for most of your VPN hashing encrypt and, and encryption needs. Uh, we really don't need SHA-3 yet. Nonetheless, the cryptography industry does try to stay ahead of the game, which is why they probably voted SHA-3 the winner. And it is the algorithm we might use 5, 10, 20 years from now. So just keep it in the back of your mind. In hacktivist news, there's been yet another big data breach, this time against universities. Uh, a team called Team Ghost Shell, it's a hacktivist team I talked about in the past who've done other big breaches of banks and politician sites, this week released it a pastebin post containing uh, user data of about 120,000 different uh, university students or facility members. Uh, basically, according to their pastebin post, this group of hacktivists is just trying to create a political message. They're trying to say that they think the education system is messed up, college tuition costs too much, uh, lots of countries don't have good education, whatever. And to spread this political message, they decided it was a good idea to bring reach about 100 different universities and steal and leak a bunch of user data. If you do belong to one of the 100 or so universities that have been breached, you might want to check out the Pace Bin Boast. Make sure your credentials aren't part of this big leak, and if they are, you'd need to change them immediately. In just more interesting security news, there were two stories this week that actually highlighted some of the social engineering techniques online hackers and scammers use to uh, steal our money or our passwords. The first story I saw was on the Kotaku Gaming blog where a writer interviewed a teenage Xbox hacker. Uh, basically the hacker talked about how he used social engineering techniques to phone up companies like Microsoft's Xbox Live division or PayPal or Netflix or many of the other cloud-based uh, network services we use and he leveraged security practice flaws in these phone representative systems to get passwords reset and gain access to many accounts. Very similar to the Matt Honan story we talked about a few weeks ago. Anyways, it's a fascinating read. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the WatchGuard Security Center post associated with this video, so check that out. The second story came from Ars Technica and followed one of the phone AV scammers. Basically, these are people that call you up on the phone and pretend they come from an organization like Windows or Dell. They claim to see information about how your computer has been infected with viruses and is infecting other people. They then try to convince you to go over the phone and then troubleshoot this problem. They typically take you into event log, Windows event log, where there's typically lots of errors that might fool an unsuspecting person in thinking they have a virus. And of course, the whole point of this is they say they can help you clean this uh, if they can charge you $50 to $450 and gain remote control of your computer. So this is a very big money-making scam, not to mention giving remote control to some uh, unknown user is a, a bad idea. So that was also a fascinating article where Ars Technica actually got one of these calls and played along to see how these guys operate. I'll put a link to that as well in my post on this video. So let's finish off this week with uh, Microsoft's advanced notification. As usual, next week is Microsoft Patch Day. They patch uh, cyclically the second Tuesday every month. Uh, they released their advanced notification bulletin and they warned that they're going to release seven security bulletins. The bulletins will fix flaws in Windows, Office, SQL Server, and some other Microsoft server software. Uh, only one of the seven bulletins is marked as critical. The rest are, are marked as important. So this is a pretty average Microsoft patch day. That said, don't forget that Microsoft is also going to force Windows to get one of their service updates where they require 124-bit RS. SA keys. If you have a PKI infrastructure, you need to make sure you've implemented at the minimum 124-bit RSA keys in your infrastructure, otherwise they'll no longer work in Microsoft Windows after next week's patch day. So just be aware there are some patches coming out next Tuesday. We'll talk about them next week. Well, that wraps up yet another week in security news. I hope you learned something useful or found one of the stories interesting.
Until next time, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog where I post more regular security stories. For instance, earlier this week I posted yet another episode of Radio Free Security, our iTunes and MP3 podcast about security. Uh, this month I interviewed Sharon Shaw, a security and SCADA expert from Alstom Grid. So if you're interested in the new trend of attackers going after SCADA and ICS systems, definitely check out Radio Free Security this month. You can also learn more about security news by following me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And you can also follow WatchGuard's Twitter alias, at WatchGuardTech. I hope you stay safe out there. And of course, thanks for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.